Hey there, my name is Luke, and I'm the co-founder of an online tutoring and resource organization called SpecialEdResource.com. We have spent the last seven years perfecting the ability to teach children with special needs online. Now that thousands of school districts and teachers are forced to shift to an online learning platform, we felt it necessary to share what we've learned in an effort to help as many children reach their excellence as possible. In today's video, we're going to discuss the basics of using an online platform called Zoom. To ensure we cover all of our bases, I've solicited the help from one of our experts, Diana. Now, Diana has taught online with us for over four years and has been an incredible part of the special ed family. Without further ado, here's Diana's walkthrough of Zoom for educators. Hello, today we are going to show you guys how you can use Zoom to help you with online learning and educating students. So first thing I want to talk to you about is when you look at your screen, okay, when you sign into Zoom, you will see your screen like this. Now you will see your picture or your video, obviously, and your students, um, but I have that turned off to show you this, and I do not have my audio on, which I'll talk to you about in a second. But first thing you want to keep in mind is everything that you're going to do is going to start from down here. Okay, most important thing is this share screen button that you see right here. When you click this share screen button, you see all of your different applications that you'll be able to share as you are working with your students. So there's a bunch of different things that you can share while you are doing this. The first thing I want to show you about is this whiteboard. When you open the whiteboard, it looks just like you would have a whiteboard in a classroom. Your student will see a white screen. Notice we get this strip of tools to automatically appear on our screen. Your students may not, have, most likely will not have that there. What you want to keep in mind is when they, when you switch, when you show to this application, you want to go to the top and look for view options. Okay, and view options will have an option for them to annotate. That's what you're looking for. Once they click that, they will get this strip of tools as well. If you happen to open your whiteboard and yours are not there, if it looks like this, just click whiteboard and they will pop up for you. Okay, and you can move them around. Your participant should be able to do that too. With these tools, you can do a lot of things on this whiteboard. First things, you can pick colors. Okay, lots of color options here. You see line widths and you can play around with all those to make it fun. But just to give you an idea, you can draw in here. Okay, you have a highlighter, so you can do different things with that. All right, and you've got some shapes. If you are working on this and you want to get rid of something, simply click the eraser, and that will erase one thing at a time. Now, what I wanna show you is there are other options on here in terms of erasing. So if you have different things on your screen, okay, and you go to this clear button, you have a couple options. Clear all will clear every single drawing on the screen. Clear my drawings is yours, the user, the host, it will clear yours. Clear viewers will clear your participants. So if they wrote things and you want to keep yours on the screen, you'll click that. Okay, I'm going to get rid of them all and click all drawings. So those are the basic features. The one other thing to note here is this text tool. When you click on this, okay, and you click in your whiteboard, you can type anything in here you want. Okay, and then when you click off of it, there it is. Two things to note here. One, when you erase this, okay, it erases the whole thing. The other thing that you want to note here is if your students are typing something to you, okay, and you can't see it, what you want to tell them is to click away from it. If you notice right now, I have a box around it. When you click off of that, that box goes away. So if they say they type something and you can't see it, just note that you might need to click off of it. Another option here and something to think about is you have an option of adding another whiteboard. So right now you see that we wrote on this one. If you click that, you can add another one. So we could add something else on this, okay? Just to, to show you here, let's just say you wanna hold something on your screen to use as reference. All right, you can click on this one and then you, know, you notice we have a two down here at the bottom. You can click back and forth between those in case you'd like to save something, you have that option. So that's the whiteboard. Next thing that's important to note is you can share any document you create with your students, PowerPoint, Word documents, PDFs. Again, you're going to go down to this share option down here, and you'll notice that I have my PowerPoint here. Now, mind you, this does need to be open on your computer to share it. So when it was minimized at the bottom of my toolbar down here, I was not able to click it from here. But once you open it, you're able to see it here. So click on that, and you'll notice you can share your whiteboard or your PowerPoint. Okay. Now, you can go this right into a slideshow. So you can share it and use it just like you would with a normal PowerPoint presentation. Up here, you've got your options again. What you're gonna to wanna to click is annotate if you would like to annotate or write on this. And you're gonna click your tools and you're able to draw on here. 
Okay, and your user, your participant will be able to do the same thing. Two things to note here. One, if you're going down here and trying to switch among slides, you cannot do that if your toolbar, this right here, is open, okay? If you'd like to switch screens, you must close that. Notice it leaves your writing on the screen. So if you close it and switch, it can leave your writing, which sometimes might be very functional. If you do not want the writing to stay on the screen, all you have to do is go back up, wait for your toolbar to pop down, annotations, get rid of them, and they're gone, okay? But just make sure that you close your tools to be able to go back and forth between your slides. All right, to get out of that, okay, we're just gonna stop share and you can just close out of your PowerPoint. Next thing I'd like to show you guys is how you can use websites, okay, to work on things with your students as well as look at um, a, an option for playing games. So first thing I'm gonna show you is I'm gonna share Google Chrome with you. And when we're in Google Chrome, if we go to something like IXL, okay, if you'd like to work on something with your students, first thing to note is you do have tools here as well. If you go to the top and you go to annotate, okay, you can write on here and use this however you want. Maybe you want your student to pay attention to something in the sentence, or you want to show them an example over here, you can write on it. Keep in mind that when you do this, you cannot type in this box with your tools open. You must close them. And just like with the PowerPoint, okay, if you don't erase your marks, they're going to stay. So you can still type in here, but then your marks are on the screen. So if you obviously, if you'd like them to go away, just get rid of them, okay, close this, and then you can type in here. Something else to keep in mind with this option, you can give students control of your computer and they can actually type or manipulate this IXL, or if you wanna play a game, they can manipulate a game as well. I will not have this option at the top of my toolbar just because I do not have somebody signed in. However, when you are in Zoom, if you go to the top, there's an option up here to give remote control and it'll appear right up here by the annotation mark. You're just gonna select that and select your participant's name and you'll see it right there in the list. And then you'll get a message up here where right now you see this green and red bar. There, it, once you give them control, it will say waiting for whatever your participant's name is to take control. And then when they click on their screen, you just have to remind them to click on their screen. Once they click on their computer screen, that's what gives them control. And then up here, you'll get a message that says they're controlling your computer. If you'd like to take that control back, all you have to do is go up to the top where you gave them control. And then instead of giving them control, you'll have an option to abort control. And then you can take that right back. You can also click on, their, on your screen while they are. Um, just note that sometimes it gets a little tricky because then your mouses are going all around. So just something to keep in mind. Uh, those are the basic features of how you can use Zoom to make this functional, interactive, and just like a regular classroom. That said, as with anything with technology, there can be some hiccups. So in our experience in troubleshooting with Zoom, while there aren't many, we just want to point out a few things to you that might be important to mention as you're getting used to this. First thing was what I had mentioned to you with the tools. When you share something with your student, they will not have their tools pop up like this, okay? So keep in mind that they will have to go to view options and select their tools. They will have to do that every single time that you switch applications. So if you're in a whiteboard and they pick them, and then you switch to your, let's just say you go to your uh, website again, they'll need to select them again, okay? Something else that's cool before I get back into troubleshooting here is note that my whiteboard stayed. So even though I closed it, okay, if we do a different activity and you want to refer back to it, it's open for you. Um, so that's the first thing. Just make sure that your participants remember to go to view tools to find their tools in each application. Okay. Other only issue that we really have encountered would be the audio. So when you first sign in, as you note down here, I have start video and audio. I do not have a lot of options right now because I didn't start my audio due to the recording. However, once you are in here, you will see all a bunch of options in terms of which audio to select. Okay, so if you have headphones in, you'll see your headphones. If you have your computer speakers and microphone that you wanna use, that will be an option. So first thing is if the audio is not working, you wanna go here and make sure that you have the right audio selected. So if you have headphones in, but you have the computer selected, it might get funky and et cetera. So just make sure that the audio you're looking for is the one that's selected. If that does not work, what you'll wanna do is leave the meeting. Now mine says end meeting here because I'm the participant, but what you'll have your, I'm sorry, I'm the host. But what you'll do is have your participant click leave meeting. That's what theirs will say down here. 
And when you click that, when they click that, they'll leave the meeting and come back in. When they come back in, make sure that they're selecting the audio that they want to use within that Zoom session. Third thing here is if that doesn't work either, okay, what I would recommend you do is go into your settings on your computer, look for your speakers and microphone, and make sure that there is a box checked or that you are allowing other applications on your computer to access your speakers and microphone. That would be the, the other thing that might be a hold up there with the audio. Something to keep in mind with audio too is when you are playing a game with your student or you're watching something on YouTube or you're doing an activity where you want your students to hear something from the computer, if you have any sort of headphones plugged in, they cannot hear what the computer is saying. Okay, so if you want them to hear something, just make sure that you're using the speakers from your and microphone from your actual computer to ensure that they can hear the sound too. Two other small things to mention. One, this meeting number up here, Sometimes participants prefer to just go to zoom.com and enter this meeting number versus the link. Okay, so if they're asking for a meeting number, simply look to the top. It's a nine digit code. You will also see that in the link when you create the meeting. So just to point out, that's the meeting number. Finally, one other thing that's happened occasionally is sometimes your cursor will disappear randomly in applications. Mostly if you're sharing something like PowerPoint, Word, or Zoom. If that happens, just right click with your mouse and then you should see it appear again. Okay, and then you can click back to what you were doing. So if you notice that your mouse is going away, just right click again and you should get it back. That is about all we have found that we've had problems with Zoom, nothing major. Uh, we hope that you have found this helpful and you are able to use this to go and help your students virtually. We look forward to hearing from you guys in terms of how it went, what you liked and what you learned. Thanks so much. And that concludes the walkthrough of Zoom for educators. If you have any questions or need assistance, please don't hesitate to leave a comment below. While you're here, check out other videos we've created for both teachers and parents. From all of us at specialedresource.com, stay safe. We'll catch you in the next video.